Is that story? I'll be giving it to you later on. Let's have a look at the story concerning Kemsa. We are on to the health now, and the Kemsa Medical Supplies Authority, that is Kemsa, has been put on the spot over allegations of flouting procurement rules that led to misappropriation of 7.8 billion shillings meant for COVID-19 equipment. Nonetheless, the scandal-tainted authority has been on a reforms journey following a directive by President Uhuru Kenyatta in a bid to ensure smooth implementation of the national universal health coverage even so questions are still abound as to whether the reforms currently being undertaken will resolve the woes bedeviling it even as the affected staff accuse the board of sacrificing small fish at the expense of the real perpetrators of those linked with the Kemsa scandal report gloria mulemo reports Reforms currently underway at Kemsa and NHIF must be concluded for Kenyans to benefit from all these efforts. A directive that has since seen a number of changes at the Drug Supply Agency in the wake of a 7.8 billion shilling scandal relating to the procurement of COVID-19 commodities. Since the findings of our survey in 2021 that revealed that KEMSA is underperforming and is unable to deliver services to Kenyans, KEMSA employees seem to be paying the highest price for procurement scandals that continue to dog the agency. The latest being at least 30 top managers who are directed to go on a compulsory 45-day leave. There is nothing, there is no step we are unwilling to take to ensure that Kenyans get value for their money. This cleanup might mean that yes, we will have to re-engineer KEMSA into a tight fighting unit rather than uh, you know, just have a masses and masses of, of, of people. This comes barely two months after another 900 employees were sent home for 30 days amid a restructuring process in November last year. Organizational reform efforts have been stepped up to position the authority as an effective player in the local health care system. However, legal experts argue that the move is an indication of intention to terminate the employee services, despite the matter being in court. In a letter sent to newsrooms on 12th of this month, Kansas says it has not fired any employee, and the move to ask its staff to proceed on leave is meant to reduce liability. The affected employees, however, claim the board is targeting the small fish and not dealing with those linked directly with the COVID-19 commodity scandal in its restructuring process. Their sentiments have been echoed by a number of political leaders who term the exercise a mere cover-up. We asked them, why are you not coming here and telling us that, uh, uh, you know, you've, uh, you've, you've caused for the arrest of these individuals, and we gave them their names. But then the thing they did is they showed us a graph, and in that graph, it showed clearly that since this COVID millionaire scandal hit, the fill uh, order rate went down from 60% to 18%. So the whole mess was caused by the COVID-19 millionaire. Up to now? No action has been taken, whether administrative or uh, criminal. So we have asked that those issues this, that are interlinked with this problem, because when you talk about debt, it includes the debt that was incurred during the COVID-19 uh, issue. Some of the challenges bedeviling cancer, according to the survey, includes financial crisis, lack of financial control, and collected debts, supply chain crisis, warehousing and distribution problems, dead stock, and purchase of non-priority items. KEMSA says currently it is owed 6.4 billion shillings and it owes its creditors 4.5 billion, many of who are county governments. A report by the Public Investments Committee released in September last year indicates that procurement of medical supplies were done without approval of budget. The report further noted that cancer exaggerated the prices due to lack of market survey, as explained by the suspended CEO Dr. Jonah Manjari, while appearing before the Public Investments Committee. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, ESCC, was expected to investigate CAMSA board on the role played during the procurement of the COVID-19 commodities. Alongside Manjari, other suspended employees at the authority included the Director of Commercial Services and the Director of Procurement.
They were suspended to pave way for investigations after being adversely mentioned in the irregular payments relating to the purchase of the COVID-19 commodities. Sources have told KTN News that 10 officers from the Ministry of Health, six from the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital, one from the Attorney General's Office and two from the ICT Authority have now taken charge of cancer even as the authority continues to steer its way to recovery. Up to date, the DPP is yet to prosecute any person involved in the scandal. This even as the court is expected to give a ruling on February 24th regarding case challenging the intended sacking of the 900 employees. Gloria Milimo, KT News. All right, now back to the story about Cambry launching COVID kits and the calls for testing malaria 